It's not every day I get excited about new lights, but the June Molis line changed that. Let's hop in and take a look at this beauty and see what all the hype is about. you guys to the June B100 Molis, which is one out of the four new lights from this series. At a glance, you can tell that it's tiny and it's lightweight. But I'm not gonna lie to you, this tiny light is jam-packed to the brim with features. The first thing I noticed when I opened the package was that this light doesn't have that huge power adapter. Everything is built in directly into the light, so this thing is literally the definition of plug and play. So where are the controls, you may ask? All the controls are built into the side of the light, and they're clicky, so if you click it, it goes up in 20% intervals, and then I can just fine-tune from there, so I love that. And on the right side of it, you have the color temperature, so so you could do the same thing. It's either the wheel or you could click it and it hops between different color temperatures. Honestly, it's pretty nice. And yes, this little guy is by color so you can control the temperature off the sides. So that begs the question, how am I gonna control the light if I hoist it up six feet in the air and just control it from the ZY Vega app? I don't know about you guys, but using the control off an app has always been my go-to. It's almost like having a, like a little gaffer in your pocket, especially on solo shoots where you're moving quick and you gotta move lights and you're like, oh, that's a little too dark. Well, you just slide and you're good. And they put this cooling system inside that has two pressure sensors, but that's the cooling system that they use all the way from the 100 to the 500 watt light. Pretty cool stuff, huh? Okay, that's enough of the nerdy stuff. Let's go actually use these lights so we can talk about the performance and the quality of this light. To test these lights, I decided to get a couple of reference images and try to match them as best as I possibly could. The first reference shot that we tried to match was this one from Euphoria. So first, I hoisted up the light above and I angled it on top of Julie to get that top-down lighting to match the one in the reference image. So to start, I adjusted the light in the background to match the bulb, and once I dialed that in, we could see that the light that's coming overhead from the B100 is way too bright. So I dropped it, it was at 8.9%, and I had to drop it down all the way to 1% to match. This whole time, I was just using false color to make sure that nothing was overexposed or underexposed. Once I dialed those lights in, I just rolled the camera and I pushed in, and we got this shot. So yeah, here's a before and after, and a look at the false color from the grade that we got from the reference. We matched the exposure, so it's pretty similar. I'm not gonna lie to you, I usually get super nervous when I have to rig lights overhead like that, because most lights are really heavy, and I always sandbag my C-stands, and you should too. The second light that we used as a reference was this hard light silhouette. I'm not gonna lie, this is an extremely contrasty look and it might not be your cup of tea, but I thought it was worth a shot. For this one, I threw a couple curtains on top of a C-stand and I tried to match it to make it look like the back window. After we finished setting that up, we put the light outside with the reflector and we just shot it through the light and I had it at 2700 around 8% just to get that warm light coming through the window. Once we had the shot, I just graded it to match the reference image and this is what we got. And a look at the false color after the grade with the reference. What I noticed on this one is how bright this little light actually is. So I only had it at 8% and it was bashing that hard light straight through the window and it honestly filled up my whole apartment. The other thing I noticed was how easy it is to tilt the light from the little handle that it has on top. So it's just so intuitive. You just twist the knob and then you can just push it up and down. It's pretty nice. Not good. And the last shot that we tried to recreate was this shot from Beef. For this one, I just dropped the exposure in the room with the ND because it was sunny outside and the sun was just bashing through. And then I simply just grabbed the B100 with the softbox and put it on a chair next to me and I angled it to match the reference image. Once I started grading, I noticed that in the shot they had more of like hard light on the face. So I'm, they probably bounced it off something or they bounced it off the wall into his face, but I just used a softbox so mine looks softer. After using this light for a bit, there's a couple pros and cons that I have for you. The first one, it's super light and it's compact. So it's easy to hoist up, throw it up on a C-stand, do overhead lighting, hide it in a corner, use it on a chair to get a shot, a quick shot. Like that is a huge pro for me and I love that about this light. And the second thing I like about this light is that it's 100 watts and it might not seem very bright, 
but I didn't have to push anything past 1 to 10% in any of the tests that I had. The output is way better than I expected on a 100 watt light, especially through a softbox. I'm gonna throw a third one in here that's a bonus. I love the design of the light. I know that doesn't really matter to a lot of people, but it matters to me. I really enjoy how June's products look. So if you're into your products looking nice, this is a nice light. Put it on a little shelf and just look at it sometimes. At this point, we've only been talking positively about this light, so let's talk about a couple cons. My first con is that this light doesn't have tint controls to be able to get greens or magentas out of the light, and the light's sitting at $229. I wasn't expecting it to be there, but that might be your make or break for you, so if you're looking for that in this light, it doesn't have it. The second con that I have for this is the actual length of the power cable. And don't get me wrong, the length of the cable is actually decently long, but I know I'm going to have to carry around an extension cord if I have to connect it to a port that's extremely far away. So that might be a problem for me. I don't like carrying extra cables like that, but in most scenarios, I feel like the length of the cable right now is decent. But if you need that extra reach, you're definitely going to need an extension cable. So just think about that. I would absolutely love if they came up with some power solution where you could connect it directly into the plug and then attach like a V mount or a gold mount battery without adding a, a control box. So yeah, June. Maybe, maybe that's something you can come out with. And my bonus con is that you can't control the effects that the light has from the app. So I think that's something you can fix from an app update or a firmware update. So I don't think it's going to be a big problem, but be sure to know that because if you have that thing up in the air, you're going to have to get that thing down, hold that button to get those effects. Mm, that, that doesn't seem like a good time. So do I think these lights are worth getting? I would honestly have to say yes, because they're light. They're easy to move, they don't have a control box, and ultimately that's just gonna speed you up on set. And they're affordable, they're $229 for a 100 watt light, which is pretty decent, especially with all the things that it has in the app. Those are good things to have on set, especially if you have more from the ecosystem. They have really strong ones too, they have a 500 if you're interested in that, but I would like to try that out first, so. So thank you June for sending this out for me to try and if you guys are interested in picking one up there's a link right here in the bio and yeah I'll see you on the next video. Peace.